Hey everyone, today I'm thrilled to dive into a fascinating topic that's buzzing in the world of research, the changing criterion design. Let's unravel what it is, why it's used, and explore its strengths as well as its limitations. Imagine you're a researcher and you want to see how effective a new study technique is on student performance. But how do you measure improvements step by step, ensuring that each change is due to your intervention and not something else? Here's where the changing criterion design comes into play. This design is a type of single subject research method that tests the effect of the independent variable by gradually altering the criterion that the participant must meet. So as a researcher, you can adjust the performance benchmarks bit by bit and observe how the changes affect the outcome. Why do researchers opt for this method? Its precision is a major draw. The changing criterion design allows for a detailed analysis of how incremental changes influence behavior or outcomes. It's perfect for educational settings, therapy for behavior modification, or any situation where gradual improvement is expected. However, every rose has its thorn. The main strength of this design is also a limitation. It requires consistent adjustment and close monitoring, which can be resource intensive. Moreover, it's crucial to ensure that each new criterion is challenging, yet achievable to maintain motivation and avoid plateaus. Despite these challenges, the changing criterion design remains a robust tool in a researcher's arsenal, providing clear insights into how and why changes occur over time. It's a method that not only measures outcomes, but also illuminates the path to achieving them. Thanks for tuning in. If you're a researcher or just a curious mind, understanding these frameworks can add depth to your knowledge and precision to your endeavors. Until next time, keep questioning and keep exploring.